Our top story this hour, Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association says it has temporarily called off its nationwide strike. Members of the association have abandoned their post in the last three days to press home demands in connection with their conditions of service. Hundreds of patients were left stranded, while some doctors in parts of the country had to double up to take up extra roles to attend to patients in critical condition. Speaking to me on news desk a while ago, however, General Secretary of the Nurses and Midwives Association, David Tinkwine Trum said his members will not return to work till tomorrow, Thursday, September 24. We have been properly served by the Labour Commission. So, as law abiding citizens, as we've been talking about all the time, they have decided to temporarily suspend the strike and proceed to the Labour Commission upon the invitation. So this is because of the substituted service of the court documents, if, if I'm getting correctly. Exactly. We were, um, yeah, the substituted service was what was given to us, and uh, I think that it was properly served this time. And for that matter, we need to, um, we can decide the expectations of the, of, of the local. Right. So when are you returning to the negotiating table yesterday? The Ministry of Employment gave us the impression that they have called you back today to continue negotiations. Are you going for that meeting? This negotiation is not right for. Uh, yeah, is that some kind of answer? Uh, uh, sorry. Um, we've been called to the Labour Commission, obviously. Uh, not necessarily to start negotiations, because if you don't negotiate at the Labour Commission, either you go for compulsory arbitration or something like that. We will get there and be able to know the reason why we are inviting us. Okay. So your meeting with the Labour Commission will be to discuss the details of the strike? I don't know the agenda of the meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, so until we get there, we will not, I will not be able to okay. have whatever discussion that is going to take place over there. What is the next step for you, Mr. Tinkwai, and I mean your organization, your association in, in the agitation for the conditions of service to be met? Well, what I know is that we have been invited by the Labour Commission. Our demands are still on the table and it is not over until it is over. So when you say it's not over until it's over, what's the next step that the association mm -hmm. is going to take? I'm sure the Labour Commission will especially direct us and the employer to perhaps go back to the negotiating table. So that's what we are looking forward to. But time is of essence. And if anybody thinks that you can fix track or foot track their process, then it's up to that person. Right. So, so finally, Mr. Chum, does that mean that if we go to the hospital this afternoon, we'll meet nurses there? We're indicated. So there's a certain system. We have a certain routine way of doing things. We have just announced that we have temporarily suspended a strike. Most of our people may not even be present at their uh, place of work. So we've asked them to resume duty at uh, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, still on elections, the NDC's presidential candidate, John Dramani Mahama, has expressed disappointment in the MPP administration abandoning the Sunyani Ring Road his government started. He said, extra taxpayers' monies will be required to bring the Sunyani Ring Road back to life. Speaking to Chiefs and People at Sunyani Magazine on day two of his aborted campaign tour of the Bono region, the former president called for an end to the practice of governments looking away from projects they did not start. <laughs> I said, I said, 
Now, John Ramani Muhammad there speaking in Akan, he says that four years ago when he was campaigning uh, for re-election in 2016, he inspected the ring roads which were under construction in Kumasi, in Sunyane. Uh, he went on to lament the fact that they have all been abandoned, reiterating the fact that um, governance is a continuum. And so when one government finishes, uh, well, does work to a certain stage, the next government has a responsibility to continue. He says that when, if he's re-elected, re um, if he's elected in December, he would indeed revisit those projects. You're live on Joy News today. Now, farmers in Pologo have called on governments to come to their aid following the total destruction of their farmlands. Now, imagine losing half of your annual salary. That is a grim reality farmers in Pologo are faced with following the northern flood disaster, which wiped out their entire harvest. Speaking to host of the Super Morning Show, Kojo Yangsen, the farmers said they were unable to feed their families and called on governments to come to their aid with food and supplies to alleviate their plight. So, in your community, I mean, I can see about 10, 15 men here. How many farmers do you have in total in your The community, community is just full of farmers. Mm -hmm. We are born into farming. So we cannot even say that we have a number of these as farmers. Everybody, the livelihood of us is to farm. I see. Just few that have uh, maybe other government uh, sector working small, small. So this is your main occupation? Yes. The major occupation here is farming. Okay. Is there anybody here whose farm was not destroyed? No, we're all affected. All of you, your farms, yes. all gone? Yes. I want an idea of how much money you have lost. Normally, your harvest, how much do you get for, for your harvest? Personally, myself, I think uh, what I've lost this time around is, is almost about 50,000, uh, 5,000, sorry. Uh -huh. It's about 5,000. But I think my colleagues, some of them are even doing better than me. Mm -hmm. So maybe they might have even lost more than what I have done. Mm. So if you are a maize farmer, for example, yes. you harvest how many times a year? Twice. Twice. Twice a year? Yes. And one of your harvests has just... It's almost oh. all. Because the time of the, uh, the, first the first harvest, late, because the rains didn't set uh -huh. in time. Uh -huh. So it's so like... So some of you farmers have actually lost twice. two harvests. Uh -huh. But others, they were able to harvest the first one. Depend upon the time he started the dry season, the irrigation one before he will harvest. So how are you going to feed your family? <laughs> we, we for ourselves, God for us all. Uh, that depends on God. But uh, one acre we can harvest. We can't depend on God only. Because uh, we, we are also relying on government. But we can't depend on God only. God yeah. knows that we have lost. But government doesn't know. Maybe he's yeah. out there. Government is out there. He doesn't know that we have lost a lot. So we are just praying that if government can come in, at least give us the necessary support that we need. God, we are going to rely on. We are praying all, every day that yeah. our families need to feed. And all of us are not workers. Most of us are predominantly farmers. So we are going to rely that government should come in. Uh, this God should come in now. Although we are praying, God knows he will come in. But at least we are also praying that government should come in as a matter of fact to help us in this situation we are facing. Hmm. Yeah. What do you want government to do for you? For now, for now, government can come in at least, maybe, especially Palogu, all of us are predominantly family. So if government can come in for now, at least maybe each house, maybe there should be at least 10 bags of corn, uh, 5 bags of rice, uh, 2 bags of beans, at least we can manage for the year. For now, that's, that's what you would have done yes, with your money yes, if you yes. had And harvested. at least maybe some capital, you should raise some capital for us, at least to bring school fees for our kids, because we've invested a lot in this farming this year. I know that the government says they have been warning those who live 
and farm near the White Volta that every year when they spill the Bagre Dam is going to damage your, your property and your farms. Has government ever said that to you before? Have you been warned not to farm? As I've told yeah. you, we've been warned. But as I've, I'm telling you now, since the five years, I've never seen this water. So even those farm upland, our farms were washed. So you can imagine what it is. Mm. But they've been warning you and every year. Yeah, but those who, those who that, that is those who can harvest early, we normally harvest early, but this is when it would harvest early. Secondly, it has even gone to places with the upland areas. The water has gone to take all those areas. The other issue is even that the, the siting of Palugu itself, the farmlands are closer to the river, but the settlement is uplands. So the uplands, that one is considered as houses and other small plots for farming. So if they are saying they are always advising us to move, they are advising us to move. If we should move upland, where are we going to farm? From here, if we do in mind, we'll show you a farm uh, just here, rice farm. The water entered there, it's upland. So the level of the water doesn't consider whether where you are farming is low land or if you just look at it, it's just that the, the volumes of the water is too much for us. So this is somebody's farm. This is somebody's farm. You can see the maize. He was not able to harvest. It is not even matured. So it's all rotten. It's all rotten. This one, you can only see it this way, but it cannot, you cannot feed on it. Mm -hmm. it's you can wet. see that it's smelling. Mm -hmm. Away from that story, it has emerged that 40, the 45-year-old man suspected of killing his girlfriend and committing suicide afterwards was a married man. Though police gave no further details about Emmanuel Kwache's family, they say his wife is aiding in investigations. Kwache, who is suspected to have killed his girlfriend in Cape Coast, was found hanging dead on a tree at the Bronyebima MA Basic School near Elmina on Tuesday. Joe News' Richard Kojonyakun followed this story. On the 21st of September, a complainant from Akotache, one of the suburbs in Cape Coast, reported at the University of Cape Coast Police Station that he called his friend, Emmanuel Kwachi, the 45-year-old man, on his cell phone several times, but his phone was off. So this complainant subsequently visited the residence of Emmanuel Kwachi at Kakumdo, another suburb of Cape Coast, and did not see his friend, but rather saw a lady lying in his room, um, in which uh, the, the room was not locked. So the police proceeded to the scene and found the Emmanuel Kwachi's girlfriend lying in the prone position on the carpet in the sitting room. So when the body of Georgina was examined, a deep stab wound was found on the left rib with her brazier and dress soaked with blood. So they also found a blood-stained black handle kitchen knife with blood stains um, uh, I mean, in the room uh, when further checks were conducted in the room. So I managed to speak with some of the residents and they told me that the two have been in a relationship for more than five years the lady just completed the college of education um, and she's a teacher now the man also has two taxi cabs but he's also a teacher but we are also told that the lady threatened to leave the 45 year old man and because these are mere speculations because he has acquired some level of education and so they suspect this may have caused that now, Central Region Police PRO DSP Irene Opong says Kwache's wife is aiding in investigations. She spoke to me on Prime Morning. On the 1st of September, the UC police received a complaint from a complainant who stays at Akototri, the suburb of Cape, that he tried calling a friend of police and severally the friend was not and uh, he was worried. So he proceeded to his house only to see the girlfriend who was lying in the room alone in a pool of blood. Police proceeded to the scene and we saw a lady who was identified as Georgina Sahel. And right. inspection of body showed there was a deep stab under her wrist. Currently, the body has been deposited at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. 
and police was in the process of looking for the boyfriend who was a suspect in this murder case. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News today. Let's do some sport now. And the Minister for Youth and Sport, Isaac Isayama, has revealed that Black Stars coach Siki Akono has agreed to take a pay cut due to the impact of COVID-19. Now, Akono took over the Black Stars job in January and is yet to receive any salary from the ministry after almost nine months. Now, the minister uh, spoke to our sister station at Doom TV on Fire for Fire. <laughs> The sports ministry and the Ghana Football Association are negotiating that we reduce his salary during these difficult times. About 40, 50 percent of their contract in Yana, and that's 50 percent here. And to them, in any but we didn't say we will not pay him full payment for the COVID period. I've been quite a bit more saying that I don't know what you're saying. I said, I'm going to catch you. I know he, CK Akono, will agree because we are not in normal times. I will not lie. The truth is that we cannot pay CK Akono's full salary in these very difficult times. Okay. Well, uh, to some clubs now, and uh, the chief executive officer of Kumasi Asante, Kotoko Nanaya Amponsa, says that the club will downsize their playing body from the current 38 to 30. According to him, the decision is to give the technical handlers a chance to organize effective training and also ensure the players are well paid. The playing body, I've, I know you've been following the news, this player has been released, that player has been released. The truth of the matter is that when I came in, Asante Koto had 38 players on our books. We cannot continue in that direction. We are going to have a maximum of 30 players. Our first target is 28 players. We are going by a model of 4-8-8-4. What that means is we're going to have four goalkeepers, eight defenders, eight midfielders, and four strikers. Then, then we are going to have four youth players because there is a lacuna or a restriction in the Ghana football regulatory regime which does not allow youth players of a team to also feature for the senior side. If you go to other jurisdictions, a player can play for the youth side and still play for the senior side. Even senior players, when they are recovering from injuries, when they are deep, from deep, they go to the youth side. But we don't have that situation in Ghana currently. So we're going to have four youth, exciting youth players, making 28. However, we know that in every team there are some stars that attract, sponsorship attract the fans, so we have two slots for such players as well, making the maximum of 30. The reason it's important to have a smaller squad is for us to cater for them well, to pay them the right salaries, to give the coaches opportunity to have effective training systems, because imagine that you have 38 players and you go for training. How many teams are you in form to allow everybody? And how does the coaches get time to pay attention to each individual player? So it's important that we reduce the squad. Mm. Of course, there are players that will leave and will still be monitoring them. If they perform, we'll bring them back. It's happening in many, many places. Pogba left Man United, went to Juventus, he came back. So for us, I don't want you to feel that we've come in and we are just trying to get players out. No. It is important that we have a solid team. Kotoko should have the best team in Ghana. All right, so there's more at 2 p.m. when I bring you sports today. But um, world news uh, comes up next here on Joy News Today. My name is Nathaniel Watton, and I have love for sport.